I had no idea that bad weather was in the forecast for the night as I lay kicked back in my recliner, half asleep half watching Twilight Zone on Netflix. Even one of my favorite episodes, To Serve Man wasn't enough to keep my attention after a 10-hour Friday shift on a hot black tar roof. Most nights it doesn't take long for me to doze off in my favorite chair after a shower and a couple bush lights. This night, however, would not be one of those nights. I was jolted out of my sleep limbo by the buzzing of my cell phone, followed by three obnoxiously loud alarm sounds. This was a noise I recognized from TV emergency alert broadcasts, but had never heard come from my phone. I had a text message from Severe Alerts that read, Severe storms expected in your area. Expect heavy winds, rain, and potential flash flooding. Seek shelter immediately. Yeah, 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 I've heard that story before, I mumbled quietly to no one in particular. Stu, my best friend for over eight years sleepily me out in agreement. He then let out a mighty yawn, stretched for a bit, and then curled back up on the couch for another well-deserved nap. Growing up in northwest Illinois, thunderstorms and flooding were nothing new. Our small town of under 800 people was built on a floodplain, after all. Over the years, I have endured dozens of bouts with severe weather without suffering as much as a scratch. If anything, a thunderstorm and heavy rain has always had a calming effect on me. There's just something about feeling safe inside my home while a storm rages outside that I have always found oddly serene. Well, Stu, I guess we should get some food in our bellies before bed. Don't want to face a storm on an empty stomach. By the time I reached the kitchen, Stu was already there, waiting by his bowl and meowing impatiently. Once the word food is uttered, he's all business. One of these days, I'm putting you on a diet, I lectured, as I poured a cup full of dry food into his empty bowl, you know you aren't the spry young kitten you once were. I chuckled knowing my words fell upon deaf ears, as Stu was already halfway through inhaling his bowl of tuna-flavored pellets. As I contemplated my dining options, meatloaf TV dinner or leftover Chinese from about a week ago, I drew the curtain back and glanced out the window to see if the storm was near. Surprisingly, it was a beautiful night. Light cloud cover partially obscured the view, but I could see a nearly full moon and countless stars, one of which really stuck out from the others. To the naked eye, it appeared to be much brighter and closer than the rest. As an avid sky watcher, I was perplexed both by the strange star as well as the fact that there were no storm clouds for miles. Shows how much those weather boneheads know, I announced. Stu snorted through a mouthful of food, calling me out for my pretentiousness. I immediately realized he was right. It's not like I could correctly predict the weather 100% of the time. Shifting my attention back to my dinner dilemma, I zeroed in on the weak old carton of General Tso's chicken. After giving it the old sniff test, I shoved the carton in the microwave and punched the reheat button. Stu sat looking up at me standing in the kitchen in my boxers, with a look on his face that said, and you wonder why you're single. Before I could come up with a witty comeback, I was interrupted by a deafening crash. There was a foundation rattling boom of thunder, it sounded like someone lit off a stick of dynamite in the attic. At the same time, the power instantly went out, leaving my carton of chicken halfway cooked and the TV in the other room silent. Standing in the darkness, Stu huddled tight against my right calf, an indescribable feeling of uneasiness quickly spread over me. It was unlike anything I have felt before, a strange hollowness deep in the pit of my stomach. The best explanation would be a combination of how it felt when I found out my fiancé had been cheating on me with my old roommate, combined with the eerie sense that someone was watching me. I again peeked out the curtain, this time startled to see a completely different view. The sky was now a peculiar shade of orange, and visibility was very limited. I could hardly even make out the silhouette of the neighbor's house. The moon and stars were no longer in view, with the exception of the bright one from earlier, which now appeared to be even closer and brighter. As I observed the sky, a host of clouds rolled in, swirling and dancing in the steadily increasing wind. The rain picked up shortly after, and what started as a drizzle was a downpour within seconds. Lightning also appeared, striking from all corners of the sky. For some inexplicable reason, I felt hypnotized by the storm. 
I have always enjoyed watching thunderstorms, but felt specifically compelled to go out on my porch and watch this one up close. As I made my way to the front door, Stu darted in front of my feet, nearly causing me to lose my balance. Damn it, Stu, you are going to kill me one of these days, I scolded as I brushed him away with my foot. He meowed indignantly at being dismissed so harshly and stood by the door, back slightly arched, ears pinned tight back against his head. I'll be right back, I promise. As I stepped out on my front porch, the storm seemed to be reaching its peak. Wind was whipping through the trees, creating an unnatural waving of the branches. The rain was now so heavy I couldn't see ten feet in front of me, even though the lightning continued to light up the sky. It was like a great space battle was taking place right above my house. Standing in awe of this great force of nature, two things struck me as odd. First, there had been no thunder since the first strike. The only noise came from the howling winds and torrential downpour. The other, more unsettling thing I noticed was that it kept picking up intensity at a frightening rate. Within a matter of minutes it went from a calm, peaceful night to the worst storm I have ever witnessed. I was able to shake myself out of my trance when I sensed that conditions were rapidly becoming dangerous. The lightning strikes lit up the entire sky with each bolt, seeming to get closer and closer by the second. Heavy tree branches started to snap off and fly around the yard, tossed about like twigs. I immediately decided it was time to get to the basement as quickly as I could. As I reached for the front door handle, I heard a loud crack and turned just in time to see my largest tree, a gigantic oak that towered high above my property, get literally ripped in half by the wind. It looked like invisible hands snapping a wishbone, sending both halves crashing to the ground, one half narrowly missing the house, the other smashing into my detached garage. That was too close. Heart pounding in my chest, I whipped open my front door, slammed it shut, and made a beeline for the basement. I only had self-preservation in mind as I reached the basement door. I almost forgot about Stu. I called out for him, but I could barely hear myself over the howling winds and rain pounding the house. I started to panic. Did he slip out the door when I came back in? No, I concluded. He never tried to sneak outside, and the door wasn't even open long enough for him to get out. Was he hiding somewhere? I stood at the top of the basement steps, frantically calling his name and contemplating whether I should look for him or retire to the safety of the basement. At this moment, I heard a faint buzzing noise, like the humming of the world's largest bug zapper. It sounded like it was coming from right outside the house. The hum got progressively louder, to the point where I had to cover my ears. Then zap. It sounded like a transformer blew in the room next to me. I felt a shock pass through my body, literally dropping me to one knee. Then, all at once everything was silent. The rain was no longer beating against the shingles and siding of the house, and the wind had obviously died down, because the only thing I could hear was my own heavy breathing and the beating of my heart. After a few seconds of silence, I jumped when all of a sudden, the power came back on. All the lights flipped on at once, even those that were off when the power went out. I heard the Twilight Zone episode in the living room pick up where it left off, which was odd because I was watching it on my PS4, which takes time to boot up. I could hear my kitchen devices all running at the same time. I could even clearly hear ACDC playing, presumably coming from the stereo tucked away in my bedroom closet with a back-end black CD, which would make sense except for the fact it hasn't been plugged in for at least five years. Above all of the noise, I could clearly make out something that brought me great relief, a loud, repetitive meowing that I recognized as Stu. I immediately called out to him and started searching. After a few seconds, the power abruptly went back out, leaving me again in complete darkness. Strangely, the feeling in the pit of my stomach was gone, but my mind was racing. What was that zapping noise? Why would the power come on after that? What happened to the storm? Should I still go to the basement? Where is Stu? I remained frozen on one knee for a few full minutes, trying to take in everything that had happened. Eventually, I decided to start searching my house for Stu, after all he couldn't have gone far. I rose to my feet and headed straight for his favorite resting place, perched at the highest point of the kitty castle I'd built him when he was under a year old. 
he could usually be found either on his perch, scratching on the lower levels, or lounging in one of the many nooks and crannies. He was nowhere to be found. It was at this point I remembered how abruptly the storm had ended. Was it actually over? My curiosity instantly peaked, as it was still unusually quiet, even for our sleepy little town. As I drew aside the vertical blinds to the large portrait window in my living room, I saw a sight that chilled me to the bone. Everything outside was as peaceful as it was before the storm. I looked up to see a serene, star-dotted black sky, with the moon shining brightly as ever. Everything was completely dry, the trees had all their branches, and my giant oak was even back standing in one piece. This all happened last night. I spent all night and all day today searching the house and neighborhood for Stu, even talking to neighbors to see if they have seen him. None of them have, and even worse, none of them seem to experience the storm. I even asked about the emergency alert text message, but none of them knew what I was talking about. The power is still out, however, explained by an apology note slipped under my door from the local electric company, blaming it on solar flares or some BS. I may not have slept in over 40 hours, but I know what I experienced. I am not going to give up my search for Stu. I just needed to get this off my chest and keep everything fresh in my memory to keep me motivated. I don't know what happened, but I sure as hell am going to find out.